back to project management and we are dealing with learning unit three. Um, learning unit one really checked off understanding what is a project and describing a project. And in learning unit two, we went through a project identification and understanding um, how do you go about choosing a project. In learning unit three, we look at project proposals and how once you finally have received your uh, request for proposal, you've presented your your uh, project charter, you uh, the client has come back to say, send me a proposal uh, because I'm quite interested in what you are wanting to do. Um, so this chapter really deals with understanding how do you go about putting together your proposal and the important elements of a project proposal. So it deals with the development of proposals, a um, in response to a request for proposal from a client, the RFP, and also discussing some of the contracts and how do you engage with the client after you've submitted your proposal. So let's have a look at a project proposal development, how you go about doing that. So if you look at uh, pages 65 to 89, after this section, you should be able to understand the key concepts and requirements of project proposal, understand the credible project proposal, a fair and reasonable price for proposal when we look at the costing section. And we'll also go into a discussion around the different types and various terms uh, and conditions in the proposal as well. So let's get straight on to it. So just think about uh, this particular uh, sort of scenario. You've, uh, have you ever written an essay for an assignment? What section should be required in that particular essay? And if you think about that, every essay has a introduction, it has a body, it has a conclusion, and within your uh, body, there are different sections. As per the request for, uh, and details written down by your lecturer. So think back to uh, what I reflected on in Learning Unit 2, in which I was talking about um, looking at if a a lecturer ever gives you an assignment or if they give you a, uh, a essay to do, what are the different things that they ask you? They tell you uh, these are the things that needs to be included in it. These are the due dates. This is uh, what is required as outcome. And this is a sort of artifact or the uh, end state that we want uh, at the end of the assignment. So this particular chapter then moves on from that. Look at um, before we even get to the proposal stage before we actually submit the proposal. And that's about building relationships and customers and partners. It's a foundation for successful funding and opportunities. As a project manager now, we're shifting perspective away from being a sponsor or giving a uh, request for, for proposal. We now, we are the project manager. We are the, the company that is wanting the business from a client. So it's important that you listen well, that you are constantly learning about the client and their particular needs and what they want. And it's not about what we want. Yes, we want the business. Yes, we want to be able to run the project on behalf of the client, but ultimately it's about what the client needs and what the client client requires. Trust is key and ethics is imperative. First impressions are important um, when you're developing customer relationships and you should be able to give a, a credible solutions to the issues that the client faces. And you should be able to partner with key individuals within the organization in order to build up and develop those relationships. So now that you've developed and built those relationships, now there is this process before the RFP comes out with the request before the client actually tells you, yes, send me a proposal. Before that, you can actually start putting together some, some thoughts around uh, what the client is, the position that the client is finding themselves in, or potential projects that the client might uh, want, to, um, want to run or want to develop, whether it be a piece of software as earlier, whether it be a piece of uh, or product, or a big infrastructure, engineering infrastructure development, um, they all follow the same process. So before you start off um, 
you don't really have a cost um, from the customer. And, and it's also important that you start building those relationships before the proposal starts so that you can understand and have a close understanding of what the current client needs are before you go into the proposal process. Now, the most important thing is, do we decide to develop a proposal or submit a quote? And this is an important pause um, to take. This is an important reflection point to take as a business, as a potential uh, project manager, because there are certain things that uh, impact this decision. One of them is the cost and the time that it will take to run the project. Do I have the the time uh, or can I commit this time to running this project? Um, and also, is it going to cost me? How much is it going to cost me relative to what the proposal uh, budget is? Contracts must also be realistic about the probability of winning a contract. It is no use if I am a advertising agency and I'm going to submit a, and this is just, you know, a very bad example, but if I'm an advertising agency that focuses on a, above the line um, sort of promotion activity uh, and I'm really focused uh, on above the line stuff and maybe outdoor stuff, uh, the chances that I will get a digital contract, uh, especially uh, at, at the current moment, is going to be fairly slim. So I need to be realistic about what I can do and what I can't do. You then have to evaluate that bit, no bit decision. Uh, is it in our best interest to just step away and walk away, or is it in our best interest to submit a bid as well? Factors to consider. Competition. What type of competition are there? What's the risk of me not being able to uh, land the project, but also to complete the project? Is it in line with our business vision and mission statement? Is it, um, do we have to extend our capabilities or can we do it all in-house? And our reputation, if we should fail in delivering the project, what is the repercussions for our reputation? Are we going to be able to um, come back from it uh, or are we going to be known in the industry as a project manager or as a business that cannot fulfill the requirements? And also, is there sufficient funds from the customer point of view? And then, the proposal resources and then project resources that we as a business have at our disposal in order to successfully complete the project. Now let's look at uh, creating a winning proposal. At this point, hopefully you would have done a bit of a, a exercise in which you would have seen or at this point you might have even started reading through the textbook um, in understanding what a winning proposal looks like or what a proposal uh, consists of. It is essentially a selling document. It is a document that sells your business. It is also supposed to, or it must provide the best solution to solve the client's problem. It should highlight some unique factors, your USP or our USP, our unique selling points, emphasize Benefits of the customer will be simple and concise and address requirements of the RFP. And this is quite important. The proposal should address what the client wanted. The proposal should dovetail and be in line with the project charter. So you do your presentation to the client. The client signs the project charter. You, the client, then issues an RFP and says, please send me a proposal. You then base your proposal on your project charter. That's why those two documents, even for your assignment, those two documents are very similar. So now before you start putting the proposal together, you need to start putting a team together, which is important. Uh, who is going to be part of that team? Uh, who has the best um, uh, skill set in order to uh, prepare the proposal? And then you need to start putting some time into writing it, reviewing it, getting management approval, and also the length is dependent on the RE. Once again, your response is to the RFP. 
The proposal consists of three major sections, which is your technical, management, and cost section. We'll go into each one of these shortly. And your detail depends on the complexity of the project. Some, com uh, some projects are highly complex. Think of big engineering complex uh, projects like building of dams and roads and buildings and so forth. These are highly complex projects and you'll find the detail, the, the, the proposal document goes into the hundreds and hundreds of pages. Um, and your proposal really is driven by your RFP requirements. Have a look at pages 75 to 80 for some further detail. So let's have a look at the technical section. The technical section is about expressing and understanding what the client wants. If the client wants a above the line campaign, that is what your proposal should talk to. If the client wants a piece of software developed for a, a call center, that is what your proposal should talk to. It should always try it must make or, or meet the needs of what the client has explicitly put down in their RFP or request for proposal. You should also have a proposed uh, approach and solution, and also, most importantly, the benefits to the customer. How do you go, how is your proposal different from your competitors, and how best does it solve the customer's problem. The management section is, is the second part of the proposal, which is a description of all the major tasks, the deliverables, your project schedule, your project organization, who does what by when, your related actions, and also the equipment and the facilities that you will be needing. This is the heart of what the project is all about and really details who is doing what by when, and most importantly, the next section that follows is a cost estimate. And again, this is a cost estimate. It cannot be your final budget simply because there is too many unknown variables uh, and all of these are cost estimates. And this is where the strength of your experience comes in. And this is where a lot of projects fail, meaning that they don't make efficient profit for the project manager, or they don't meet the client's expectations. So your experience in being able to estimate the correct labor cost, the material cost, the equipment cost, the travel, travel cost, the overhead cost, um, is where the strength of um, many project managers come in. The ability to be able to estimate properly and the ability to estimate um, well that brings in a quote or a proposal that is competitive um, and lands them the project. So the pricing considerations that you need to consider is competition, who else is bidding. You shouldn't be overpriced or underpriced and both is, um, is important and this is where your ability to estimate come in. And also, the value of the project to the contractor and the customer's budget needs to be considered. On page 81, you will be able to see a simplified project proposal. There are two types of uh, project proposals. There is the more common, and these are um, uh, many hundreds of pages, and they've got charts and figures and tables and all kinds of um, sections in it, and these generally are for these massive and engineering uh, projects, uh, and as opposed to or versus a more simplified project proposal, which includes the customer statement of need, the assumptions, as well as the deliverables, the resources required, the schedule, the price, the risks, and expected benefits. This is also the format that is required in your assignment. So when you do your assignment and when you approach your assignment, the simplified project proposal structure will be what uh, I will be looking for and what your lectures will be looking for. So now you've submitted your proposal, what happens now? You submit it, you should submit it on time. It should be formatted properly in the required um, uh, format, the 
client wants it. There should be hard copies as well as email. You then have to be following up proactive. Your client would most of the tell you, we will tell you when we will look at all the proposals and when we will finally decide on who is going to um, receive our, our business. And you should be close to those uh, deadlines. And this is where those relationships come in. If you have good and strong relationships with your clients, you should be able to uh, pick up the phone uh, and, and call up the client and say, uh, when would you be able to give us feedback on our proposal? The customer evaluation form, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this. You can go and have a look on figure 3.2. It is the customer sets a set of criteria and they may require possibly some additional information as part of your proposal. And then finally, for this particular section of chapter three, we come to contracts and the importance of contracts. So when you finally have submitted your proposal, the client is now uh, has accepted your proposal or they have shortlisted you. There is two or three of you and have shortlisted you. Now the negotiation starts with each one of the shortlisted. And this is where you start discussing your contracts Contracts must be signed before the work, established communication, and also agreement of deliverables. There are essentially two types. There is a fixed price and a cost reimbursement. The fixed price contact is very good when you have very low risk for the, cl for the client and also high risk for the contractor. So as an example, you are, um, the client comes to you and here is a marketing campaign that I want you to run. The budget is three and a half million rand. And I want as part of that marketing campaign, a advert that needs to be flighted on these TV channels, as well as a some sort of outdoor campaign that included in that, as well as some sort of print campaign included all of that. And they give you very specific guidelines and these are the requirements. And it is a, fixed budget now for the client they would be able to get all of those things even if the pricing fluctuates so there's a high risk to the project manager or to the marketing agency that um, they might not be able to make profit because they might not understand and know um, that some of the pricing by the media uh, being able to develop the print being able to um, uh, one in the develop the, the, the advert, um, be able to flight the advert. They might have a very good idea of the cost, um, but there might be things that come in the way and the cost fluctuates. Um, so in a case like that, uh, what you would say to the client is, we can possibly look at a cost reimbursement contract, which then says, which allows the agency to be able to um, buy all of the media, um, develop and um, and produce the advertising and all of um, the, the print and all of the outdoor uh, elements that needs to be done and provide the client with a cost and say, this is what it is costing and we will then take a project fee. It is very low risk to the contractor but very high risk to the client because the client ultimately don't know what the cost is going to be. And this is the balance because for the contractor, the cost reimbursement contract is always the best for a project manager. Again, it depends on the type of project, whereas a fixed price contract is always best for the client. But again, this depends on the type of project. And then finally, in this section, there's the terms and conditions, which is quite important. Uh, and this is the misrepresentation of costs, notice of cost overruns, approval by subcontractors, disclosure of proprietary information, um, terms of payments, bonuses and penalties, and so forth. It is quite important that these are discussed and that every single stakeholder fully understand what the terms and conditions of the contract is. This sort of wraps up this part of 
uh, the first uh, part of this chapter. And the next part uh, we will be discussing will go through project proposal success.